From WTVQ-TV, this is 36 on Your Side, Weekend Edition. An unusual seminar on an unusual topic. Police from across the country meeting in the bluegrass this weekend to map strategy against a relatively new type of threat, religion. Good evening, I'm John Wesley Brett. Thanks for joining us for 36 on Your Side at 6. On September 11th last year, America experienced firsthand what in other parts of the world has become all too commonplace, barbarian acts all in the name of religion. It is terrorism that we in a mostly Protestant country find hard to understand, but something we can no longer ignore. Jody Ambrose has our top story, a strategy for coping when religion isn't righteous. So training is one thing, but officers there admit they still need your help, too. They want to hear from you any time that you notice what you feel may be an extremist group in the making. Three teenagers charged in the January 5th drive-by shooting death of Ryan Harris in Jessamine County told a judge yesterday they didn't do it. 17-year-olds Daniel Gordon and Joy Reynolds and 18-year-old Summer Turner were arraigned on charges. They followed Harris in his car, robbed him, and then shot him. The Commonwealth attorney is going to seek the death penalty for the two boys. Several deadly crashes around the bluegrass yesterday. We begin down in Rockcastle County, where 50-year-old Ronald Rash was on northbound US 25 about 3 yesterday afternoon, ran off the road, overcorrected, hit an embankment. His car flipped. He was rushed to the hospital, but he died a short time later. Then just two hours past that, Madison County officials were called out to an accident on Boonesboro Road, where 21-year-old Mark Branham crossed the center line. An oncoming car tried to avoid him, but not to avail. Branham was hit in the driver's side of the car, and he died at the scene. And then finally in Montgomery County, where officials are investigating a double fatality. Shortly after 11 last night, 29-year-old Melissa Williams and 33-year-old Charles Mann were on Paris Pike. The driver, Melissa Williams, lost control of the vehicle and ran off the road. She overcorrected and hit a tree, both pronounced dead on the scene. Well, a plan to widen Clay's Mill Road to make several intersections on that road safer will be presented to the people living in that area on Tuesday. Part of the plan includes adding a center turn lane and then widening enough to create a bike lane. Since last January, an advisory board has been tweaking the plan. The final report should be finished in June. Construction is now set to start 2005. Well, of course, we all depend on rescue squads to be ready when we need them the most. And we count on firefighters and paramedics to save our lives, so a continuous training is necessary. Well, today, emergency personnel from all over Kentucky got together for training school, learning about some of the most up-to-date information and equipment that can help them do their jobs. Among them, this UK helicopter paramedic on hand to show county paramedics the tools that he uses during emergencies. Our, our first comment is usually, it's so big. <laughs> um, they're not used to seeing some of the uh, larger helicopters uh, and we can take up to four medical crewmen and two patients at one time so it, uh, it's, it's been really good for us the aircraft. All emergency personnel in Kentucky are required to go through training at least once a year. Well a little chilly but overall a beautiful day out there today and up next a group of kids who took advantage of the good weather and put themselves in the spotlight. We'll explain when we come back. Plus, more fighting and a number of added casualties due to the fighting halfway around the world. We'll take a closer perspective later. From WTVQ-TV, this is 36 on your side at 11. Good evening, I'm John Wesley Brett. Thanks for joining us for 36 on your side at 11 o'clock. Coming up tonight, a group of officers sat down to face the reality of an ugly subject today religion now being used as a ploy for gangs. An oil spill in Louisiana made a huge mess causing tons of damage. Cleanup officials hope that this is really just a bad dream. And a very special group of kids celebrate opening day, but they're not watching, they're playing. We start with the exclusive 36 hour forecast. Christy Dutton is in forecast center 36. Wesley. All right, Christy, thank you. A group of Christians trying to stop what they call spiritual violence against gay people. They say the messages coming from religious leaders are destructive to the gay community. So in tonight's top story, Tiani Jones introduces us to a group that is searching for spiritual healing. Thank you very much. Officers from dozens of states across the country got together today at EKU to learn how and why some groups use religion as a weapon. 
There's an important network of people posing as a religious group to further their own well-being because it would give them an opportunity to meet as a group and discuss gang business. And that is where the trouble is coming in. Police say it's very easy to draw young people into these groups because certain promises sound so appealing to them. When a group comes up to them and, and say, well, we have this new religion that we're forming, it's this, it's wonderful, and kids think, oh, they say the right things, and they want to belong to that. The training is one thing. These officers who met today admit they still need your help wanting to hear from you should you notice any type of extremist groups or talk of that in the making. Time now for a look at what else happened across the region today. Covering the bluegrass begins right here in Fayette County. That's where a plan to widen Clays Mill Road to make several intersections safer is going to be presented to people living in that area Tuesday. Part of the plan includes adding a center turn lane and then widening enough to create a bike lane. Since last January, an advisory board has been tweaking the plan. The final report should be finished in June. They hope to begin construction in about uh, 2005. Today, emergency personnel from across Kentucky got together for training school, learning some of the most up-to-date information and how to use some of the new equipment to help them do their jobs better. Here's this UK helicopter, Sikorsky, and a paramedic on hand to show what kind of tools he uses during emergencies. All emergency personnel in Kentucky are required to go through this training at least once a year. Much is made of development in central Kentucky, but little of efforts to turn some land back to green. Today, a project that has been doing that for the last four years, reforest the bluegrass, celebrated the planting of its 100,000th tree. It was one of those you see of the 20,000 trees planted today by some 500 volunteers at the new Wellington Park site. Trees do more than just grow, they improve water quality and protect erosion. And that wraps up our look tonight around the bluegrass. The weekend's always a nice time to take your kids out and spend some quality time doing what they do best, play. Well, today, UK Basketball Museum hosted their first Kids' Day, and it was a real hit. More on their fun when we come back. And a pipeline rupture today near a shoreline in Louisiana. We'll tell you about it in just a little bit. From WTBQ-TV, this is 36 on Your Side, Weekend Edition. Parishioners are coming together after a well-known priest leaves Lexington's largest Catholic church. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Wesley Brett. Father Greg Schuler has left the Cathedral of Christ, the King Church, after leading the people there for nearly a decade. The loss of a trusted leader comes at a time when the international Catholic Church is in crisis and many Catholics are seeking guidance. Jody Ambrose reports tonight's top story, Catholics coping with change and criticism. The Bishop of the Diocese here in Lexington wanted us to emphasize that Father Schuler's departure has nothing, he says, to do with the, any sex abuse, which is forcing many priests out of the pulpit. Schuler is now spending time with family in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Lancaster police have arrested five people last night in a meth lab bust. That is in Garrett County and working off a tip, police raided a Lancaster apartment around 8.30, quickly finding evidence of a meth lab. And because of the volatility of meth production, they evacuated some surrounding apartments. Those arrested are Danny Price, Philip Wilcher, Joseph Douglas, Kim Joseph, Travis Jacobs. All are being held in the Lincoln County Jail. Well, it has now been a year since the Cincinnati police shooting death of 19-year-old Timothy Thomas. Thomas was the unarmed black kid shot by a white cop as he was trying to run. The shooting led to the worst rioting in the Queen City since Martin Luther King's assassination back in 1968. This is some file footage of that. Today, protesters gathered downtown to remember that day and to call on city officials to do more to help black residents economically. The officer who was shot, or who shot Thomas, rather, was tried and later acquitted on criminal charges. Developers hoping to build a village within a city as part of the planned Newtown Pike extension. Plans for a $28 million new four-lane boulevard stretching from West Main to Patterson Street will be unveiled on Tuesday. Planners are also hoping to see some existing homes renovated and new affordable housing built. And not to mention just a better road will get better traffic flow, they say, as well as trails and some walkways. The dream possibly should become reality in about five years. Meanwhile, Clay's Mill Road will also be expanded, primarily to correct a few dangerous intersections. They're going to add a center turn lane and a creating a bike lane. Those plans will also be unveiled on Tuesday. 
20 years of helping folks and still going strong. The Hospital Hospitality House of Lexington held a celebration today marking a special occasion. The house on South Limestone in Lexington opened its doors to families who have loved ones in the hospital. The group says all the credit, though, goes to the individuals and groups who give their time and donate resources each and every day. The hospitality house is, has been a home away from home for people who've been uh, from out of town visiting hospitals uh, and not had a place to, to stay or for a meal. Of course, the house depends on your financial contributions to keep going. They're always welcoming donations. You can call them. Here's the number, 859-254-8998. Well, when you hear a brass band, you just can't help but tap your foot. A Lexington band that has been entertaining these parts for about 10 years through a gala concert to mark their anniversary today. And Lexington's weirdest and most wonderful annual party rocked the town last night. The Beaux-Arts Ball will show you a few of the outfits people wore when we come back. Joining us now, Keith Spaulding. The Bluegrass features a couple of uh, special thoroughbreds. Yeah, Harlan's Holiday and Booklet have hooked up three other times coming into today's race. Booklet has won two, John, in the uh, 78th running of the Bluegrass Stakes a little later. And plus, there are two other big races today, the Wood Memorial right. and the Arkansas Derby. So it's a big day for Kentucky Derby preps. And we'll fill you in a little bit later. All right. Thanks a lot, Keith. Well, we uh, turn to a sad note now. Former Kentucky Supreme Court Chief Justice uh, has died. Robert Stevens, who is the current Justice Cabinet Secretary, died today in Lexington after a long battle with cancer. Before his appointment to the Justice Cabinet in 1998, Stevens served as Chief Justice at the State Supreme Court for 16 years. That is longer than anyone else in state's history. Funeral arrangements are being made at Millward Funeral Home. People who live along Harrington Lake are tired of trash. It has been piling up there for years, and now the neighbors are finally taking some action. Jody Ambrose shows us how folks are working to turn a weekend cleanup effort into a new way of life along the lake. Harrington Lake is a private lake with about 1,700 property owners living nearby. Only a few hundred people belong to the Conservation League, but the group is working on gaining new members. If you want to find out more about joining, log on to WTVQ.com. We've got a, a link there in our featured links section. Well, folks near Harrington Lake were the only ones doing a little serious cleaning up today. More than 100 people worked cleaning up old tires out of the Raven Run Sanctuary. The area used to be an old landfill. All the tires they collected today and found, they're going to recycle. Raven Run, uh, back in the late 60s, was a landfill. And at that time, the regulations were very lax, and you could put whole tires in the landfill. And we found that tires tend to pop up through the ground, and we're taking care of that problem. Cleared out more than 1,000 tires this afternoon. They already have another cleanup plan. This time, they're going to go to the Kentucky River. That one is set for June 15th. People in Versailles are under a boil uh, water advisory until Monday. This goes for everyone in Woodford County. The Public Works Department there says you will have to boil your water before drinking and cooking but you can use the water straight out of the tap for any bathing or showering. Again, this must you must do until Monday. They think that the six-foot split in the pipeline may have caused been caused by an age of that line. It's about 20 years old. A lot of folks out there were without water for a short time this morning. The rupture was fixed a little after 9 this morning. Lawmakers met all day yesterday to try to hammer out their differences on the budget, but did they finally come to an agreement? Will Kentucky have a spending plan by Monday? We'll tell you. And folks at JCPenney celebrating 100 years of business. And we'll show you how we commemorate the special anniversary when we come back. This is 36 on your side at 11. A well-known and much-respected Kentucky lawman has been shot to death in Pulaski County. And good evening, everyone. I'm John Wesley Brett. Pulaski County Sheriff Sam Catron was murdered tonight while attending a fish fry for a volunteer fire department. That story tops our news this evening. Kentucky State Police, as well as local law enforcement officers, are still trying to piece together what shocked the little community of Shopville in Pulaski County tonight. That's where Sheriff Catron was attending a fundraiser when witnesses say someone rode up on a motorcycle and started shooting. 
36 on your side, Jody Ambrose has just been at a news conference in London at the Kentucky State Police Post. She joins us by phone with more. Jody? Reporting live in London, I'm Jody Ambrose. Back to you, John. Well, again, Jody, before we leave you, it does appear to be an intentional shooting. I mean, earlier reports showed that a man may have driven up on a motorcycle and shot him, and that could have been a drive-by, but it looks like this time he did come on foot and did intend to do what he did. Well, we'll bring that to you. Jody Ambrose, thank you very much. Reporting to us by phone from London, the Kentucky State Police headquarters there. Sam Catron has been an instrumental part of law enforcement in Pulaski County in southern Kentucky for years. As Jody told you, one of his greatest accomplishments came in 1994 when the Sheriff's Department received a helicopter to help them search for marijuana in the area. If you knew Sam Catron, he was one of, that was one of his big points, was to try to eradicate pot in his county. In fact, he could spot it from the air and made a point to get rid of it. In Kentucky's history, there have been 314 law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty, including Sam Catron tonight. Just five months ago, another community suffered a great loss in their sheriff's department. On November 13th of last year, Jessamine County Sheriff's deputies Billy Walls, Chuck Morgan, Sammy Brown were shot while trying to serve a warrant on Todd Walker. Deputies Walls and Morgan died from their wounds. Walker was also killed. Sammy Brown is still recovering from his shotgun wounds. Former Kentucky Supreme Court Chief Justice and the current Justice Cabinet Secretary Robert Stevens passed away today. Stevens died in Lexington after a long battle with cancer. Before his appointment to the Justice Cabinet in 1998, Stevens served as Chief Justice for the State Supreme Court for 16 years. That is longer than anyone else in state history. Visitation will be at the Capitol Rotunda from noon until 5 on Tuesday and then we'll move to Millward's Funeral Home in Lexington from 5 until 9 that same day. And the funeral is set for 11 a.m. on Wednesday at Christ Church Cathedral. An Ohio woman is dead after losing control of her car and hitting a tree in Clark County. It happened about 10 o'clock this morning. Two women, we are told, were driving along Urban Road when the driver lost control of the car going down a hill. The car then hit a tree, bounced from that tree, and hit another tree. The driver died instantly. The woman driving along with her is at UK Medical Center in critical condition. And time now for a look at what else happened around the region today. Covering the bluegrass begins on the shores of Harrington Lake, including Mercer, Garrett, and Boyle counties. Neighbors of the lake say they're just sick of looking at all the floating garbage. They started cleaning it up today. The Harrington Lake Conservation League organized a trash pickup. Most of the mess, they say, is broken, floating, uh, broken uh, by uh, trash left on floating boat docks. They leave behind hundreds of pieces of styrofoam that litter the lake. Styrofoam is only part of the problem. Volunteers picked up tires, bottles, cans, even a refrigerator today. Volunteers are going to continue cleaning up tomorrow. Not only at Harrington Lake were they doing cleaning up, but more than 100 people turned out to clean up some old tires out of the Raven Run Sanctuary. This is an old landfill area. They're going to recycle all the tires they collected today. The group cleared out more than 1,000 tires, they say. And J.C. Penney celebrating 100 years in business in grand style today. A cake cutting, barbershop quartet, and folks dressed up in period costumes, all part of the fun today. Managers at the store at Fayette Mall said the anniversary really brought in the customers. Funny enough, the chain has not been in the bluegrass that long. The first store showed up here in 1929, then left 15 years later. Didn't come back until 1976. And that is covering the bluegrass in Kentucky. Well, there were some top awards given tonight to two of Lexington's most well-known names. We'll have more on the YMCA's annual Black Achiever Awards. Straight ahead. Stay with us. TV. This is 36 on Your Side Weekend Edition. A man has been arrested, charged with the murder last night of Pulaski County Sheriff San Catherine. The sheriff was gunned down after helping auction cakes baked by his mom at an annual volunteer fire department fish fry. Good evening, I'm John Wesley Bretz. Kentucky State Police have so far arrested only one man for Catherine's murder and are hinting, though, at something more sinister that last night's cold-blooded killing may be linked to a man running against Katrin for Pulaski County Sheriff. Jody Ambrose has our top story tonight. A murder, a man accused, and a community shaken to its foundation. All right, Jody Ambrose in our newsroom, thank you very much for that. News of Katrin's murder last night, of course, was telegraphed to law enforcement agencies all across the country. And throughout the night at the Pulaski County Sheriff's Department outside, sheriffs and officers from all over Kentucky stopped by to pay condolences. 
Among them, Jessamine County Sheriff Joe Walker, who you see there, lost two deputies of his own in a shootout earlier this year. Even those who Katrin had arrested even had praise for him last night. He treated me like I was somebody. I mean, if he if he picked me up for DUI or, or well, never for DUI, but public drunk, he treated me like I was somebody and not a criminal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he treated me with respect. Katrin was sworn in as sheriff in January of 1987. He was seeking his fifth term in this year's election. Congressman Hal Rogers is remembering Sam Katrin as a great public servant lost to cowardly assassins. He points out that this is the second such loss for Katrin's mother, Jenny Rachel Katrin. Her husband was killed in 1964 while police chief of Somerset, and now one of her sons has been killed while serving as Pulaski County Sheriff. In addition to his mother, Sam Katrin is survived by his two brother, or his brother rather, and two sisters. Hal Rogers is urging everyone to keep the Katrin family in their prayers. The scars of senseless attacks on lawmen are fresh in the bluegrass, you'll recall. Just five months ago, all hell broke loose down by the river in Jessamine County. Rather than submit to misdemeanor charges, Todd Walker pulled out a rifle and opened fire on three deputies who came to his landlocked houseboat. Only Deputy Sammy Brown survived the hail of gunfire. Deputy Billy Walls was killed at the scene, and Deputy Chuck Morgan later died from his injuries. Again, as for Sam Catron, funeral services are still incomplete. We expect that Lake Cumberland Funeral Home will handle the arrangements and do expect information to be made public after the family has signed off on everything. We'll pass along the word as soon as we get it. Caught between a rock and a hard place, the U.S. is trying to make sure the endless conflict between Israelis and Palestinians does not mess up our own war on terror. Secretary of State Colin Powell shuttled between unyielding leaders today in search of compromise. We'll look at how productive it was when we return. Good evening, I'm John Wesley Brett. Here's what we have for you tonight on 36 on your side. An arrest in the murder of the Pulaski County Sheriff may give a hint at its disturbing motive. We'll explain why a tragic ending is an all too familiar nightmare for Sam Catron's family. And we'll tell you of plans to honor a Lexington man who helped define Kentucky's criminal justice system. But we start with the exclusive 36 hour forecast. Christy Dutton is in forecast center 36. All right, Christy, thanks very much. Folks in Pulaski County are grieving over the sudden loss of longtime Sheriff Sam Catron, murdered in public while he was doing nothing but drumming up votes for his re-election campaign. State police have arrested a man for Catron's murder, and they have released news of a possible connection to another candidate. In tonight's top story, Jody Ambrose runs down the investigation and the community's response. We tried to contact Jeff Morris today, but he did not return our phone calls. At today's news conference, again, state police made a point of saying that Morris is not a suspect at this point. Danny Shelley will appear before a judge tomorrow morning on a capital murder charge of killing a law enforcement officer. That could get him the death penalty. For the Catron family, this is a recurring nightmare. Sam Catron's mother saw her husband gunned down in 1964 when he was Somerset's police chief. Now she has lost one of her sons while he served as sheriff. Sam Catron was known for routinely wearing a bulletproof vest because of what happened to his dad. His killer used a rifle to shoot him in the head. Catron is survived by his mother, brother, and two sisters. Funeral arrangements have yet to be announced. Memorial services are set this week for a Lexington man who was a pillar of the criminal justice system in Kentucky. Although he was in the middle of a long battle with cancer at the time, Robert Stevens lived to attend this year's dedication of Lexington's new courthouses in his honor. Stevens worked his way up to Chief Justice of the Kentucky Supreme Court, a post he held for 16 years before Governor Paul Patton asked him to head the Justice Cabinet. Visitation will be at the Capitol Rotunda this Tuesday from noon until 5, and then at Millward Funeral Home in Lexington that same evening, 5 to 9. The funeral will be the following morning, Wednesday at 11 a.m. at Christ Church Cathedral. Time now for a look at what else happened across the region today. Covering the bluegrass begins in Clark County, where today we had a head-on collision on Highway 60 requiring a life flight, though there is no word yet on the condition of the accident victims. Witness tells us it appears both cars were holding close to the yellow line as they routed a curve and then ended up hitting each other. The accident backlogged traffic for hours. Folks in Martin County have to wonder if last week's water emergency could have been prevented. It was due to the failure of a water pump, which was fixed by Friday, but that pump failure came just a week 
after state regulators warn there is trouble ahead unless that water company gets better equipment and staffing. And a weekend of cleaning up Harrington Lake was just what the place needed. Volunteers organized by the Conservation League fished out tires, bottles, cans, even a refrigerator. They say one of the most annoying things is floating boat docks losing chunks of styrofoam, which end up everywhere. People wanting to put their best face on their own property at the annual Home and Garden Show in Lexington today. Heritage Hall and Rupp Arena hosted the event. Hundreds of exhibitors, hundreds of people looking for thousands of ideas. Special auctions were held to benefit UK Children's Hospital. And thousands of Girl Scouts, my own daughter included, hit downtown Lexington today to celebrate the organization's 90th birthday. Events at the Children's Museum were followed up by a giant sing-along. The Girl Scout Council, which serves Lexington, reaches more than 50 other counties and serves a total of 25,000 girls. The world is watching as America again tries to play peacemaker in the Middle East. Coming back, we'll tell you about Colin Powell's mission to shuttle diplomacy and what he has learned from visiting both sides. Our story begins in the rural Tennessee woods just over the Kentucky border where it's rare you find a body. Rarer still that police have now found two in two years within two miles of each other. And figure the odds that both were women both nude, both stabbed, both unidentified. The latest is a Native American with tattoos, mom 77 on the right shoulder, a peacock on the left, the Lila on her leg and Ricky on her hand. Last week, experts put a clay face to the skull of the first woman found near Jellicoe, an African American lady who bears an uncanny resemblance to another unidentified woman found during the same time, but a hundred miles north in Lexington. We have all of her clothing, we have all of her teeth, we have her hair. But few other clues as to who she is or why she was found dumped two years ago in a wooded area just off I-75. Or is there? We think we possibly have a serial killer type activity going on. Todd Matthews is the man who four years ago helped put a name to another unidentified woman found dead in Scott County back in the 60s. We called her the Tent Girl. He now believes the body in Lexington and those found in Tennessee may be connected. The fact that that body was found near I-75 as well is a possible tie-in. At least it's something that needs to be considered. Matthews now runs the Doe Network, which catalogs the hundreds of John and Jane Doe's across America, a database now showing a startling new picture that in the last couple of decades there have not been just three, but 12 bodies of unidentified women found dead along I-75. He thinks it's time police take a more regional approach in their investigation, as the bodies found in Jellicoe may well have been from Kentucky. It was found just inside of Tennessee's border, and it's more associated with Tennessee in the south rather than possibly the northern area where she probably could have been from. This is a tale of two dogs over two days with two very different endings. Their backgrounds are the same, just animals no longer wanted. Either their owners brought them here, we weren't able to adopt them, um, or they were strays that their owners never came looking for them. Last year, in these five central Kentucky counties, more than 19,000 animals found themselves at an animal shelter or a humane society. Dogs, cats, ferrets, rabbits, all... This is a tale of two dogs over two days with two very different endings. Their backgrounds are the same, just animals no longer wanted. Either their owners brought them here, we weren't able to adopt them, um, or they were strays that their owners never came looking for them. 
Last year, in these five central Kentucky counties, more than 19,000 animals found themselves at an animal shelter or a humane society. Dogs, cats, ferrets, rabbits, all here for one reason or another, some reasons being better than others. They're moving, can't take the animal. Uh, new babies, that's a big one. Uh, allergies, um, grew too big. 16 years ago, Kathy Atkins went to a shelter to adopt a dog and was so overwhelmed by the helplessness of the animals here, she's never left. Yeah, you get attached to all of them. So generally, they all have a name and a personality. And She has taken 16 of them into her own home. And the local Humane Society helps with others, finding foster homes and raising money to pay for spay and neuter programs. They do work for a while. For probably three or four months, every puppy that came in came into foster care. And every kitten that came in came into foster care. Then you hit the second cycle, you know, the middle of the summer, and they start coming in heat and, and getting pregnant again. And that's when we started feeling like we couldn't keep up again. The problem is there's just too many of them, too few adopting parents, and only two options, adoption and euthanasia. Each weekday, 76 new animals appear at one of the shelters in these counties. 24 of them will be adopted. 10 more will be returned home but 42 will have to be put down just to make room for tomorrow's 76. That's one euthanasia every half hour of every day. And for this lab, the time has come. His owner's gone more than a month now and never have returned. It makes them feel better, releases their guilt from leaving the animal here, and then they can put the blame on us. Again, they bring them here and then they don't have to deal with it. They don't have to you know, actually hold their animal. Kathy is left to do that, comforting and loving, till the end. No. Never gets easier. And it never ends. On this day, the lab was the last of seven dogs put down just to make room for others who will be abandoned and now fill these empty cages in the coming week. You don't think you're going to be able to keep going, but then, oh, okay. but then something yeah. happens that keeps you going. Today, a family in Lexington grew by one. So we got on the internet and I fell in love with him. Boomer, one of a litter left at the door, now has a new home. And so does this fellow, another black lab. In just two days in this one shelter, seven put down, two adopted, and one more abandoned. After 11 years with the family, Ladies' owners are now having a baby, so today, Lady and her toys had to go. As long as we have room, availability of space, and as long as they stay healthy, then we keep them. Thousands in our area Let's hoping each day school. they'll live to see another. You either get into this pr profession and you stay a really, really long time, or you last a few weeks or a few months. I'm a lifer. Let me take you back in time for a story about a group of kids who took part of that time and burned it. Now, really, to, to know how old this rocking chair is, I can't hardly, you know, give you how many years old it is. For at least a hundred years, that rocker rocked on the front porch of Penn Store, the oldest country store still open in America. That is until some Fayette County students decided to use the rocker and other antiques for a bonfire graduation night. So I, I looked around and I couldn't find it anywhere. Went to, go, uh, to the woodshed to, to get something and it's like, oh, voila. 
Nothing. It's all gone. The students had come to Penn's May 25th to celebrate their passage into adulthood at the swimming hole next door. A pool where the young and young at heart have been playing for years. Thousands of people from all over the world, but never with such childish destruction. It was, it was frightening, really. It was just very invasive. Uh, we've been broken into several times, but this was different. Uh, it's just a completely different morality. A big part of Gene's family, a piece of all of our past, that tiny yellow poplar shack and gravel switch that has withstood the test of time, but not the test of teens. Well, the key with these is they've got to be at least two miles apart. Meet Stephen Bonney, wildlife biologist, census taker. You know, we've got lots of young males, females we hardly ever hear about, hardly ever see. Deep in the woods on the Menifee Morgan County line, Stephen is stopping by one of the more than 200 new census locations in southeastern Kentucky. He's hoping one of the most elusive sex. Never thought this would happen. Jim Humphrey went to bed last night at his house on the hill. He woke up with riverfront property. By the time I got up, it was our water was already in the front yard. My wife was kind of laying back on the couch, and I said, we better get up right now. It's coming up real fast, about looked like maybe two inches per minute. For the next two hours, the rains kept falling. Rivers kept rising over roads, bridges even street signs, and into Humphrey's house. When it was like a foot deep, we had to put the dog up on the uh, furniture to keep her from getting drowned. She's a small dog. The Humphreys weren't alone. Throughout the neighborhood, water everywhere that it wasn't just a few hours before, catching many off guard, cutting off more than a few from going anywhere except by backhoe. But by mid-afternoon, the rain had stopped, the water receded, but the damage done. $20,000 at least, Humphrey figures, to his home alone. If you just had flood insurance, which we don't, we unfortunately do not have, we've got everything covered except flood insurance. Uh, 